Hello everyone, my name is Riley Dickens and I'm a security consultant with Encryption Consulting. Now today, I'll be talking to you about the different strategies you can use to migrate your Microsoft Certificate Authority over to a newer version. So the example I'll be using today is the Windows Server 2008 moving up to the Windows Server 2019. So what we'll be looking at is the two different options available, the different pros and cons of each, and our recommendations for how you should migrate the certificate authorities. So let's get started. So when migrating your certificate authority from Windows Server 2008 to Windows Server 2019, you have two options available. And the first one is doing an in-place upgrade. So what this means is actually updating your production certificate authority while it's there. So instead of moving it over to a brand new machine, you're just updating from 2008 up to Windows Server 2019. Now this makes sure that the CA services are seamlessly migrated, but this is not the recommended way. Microsoft itself actually recommends the second option, which is an actual Windows CA migration. Now the Windows CA migration, option two, is where you actually create another physical server with Windows Server 2019 on it. So instead of just upgrading Windows 2008, you create a completely secondary Windows server that is on its own machine and works in tandem with the 2008 server until it needs to be decommissioned. So like I mentioned, option two is the recommended way to do it, but let's take a look at the pros and cons of each and see why Microsoft would recommend one and not the other. So option one, in-place upgrading. We'll start with the pros. So one of the pros of this is that it's a very systematic approach. So in our example, when you move from Windows Server 2008 to Windows Server 2019, you have to take two steps only and that's moving from Windows Server 2008 to Windows Server R2 2012, and then from there, from 2012 Server up to 2019 Windows Server. Now this gives you a very systemic approach which makes it a little simpler and quicker to move over the certificate authority. Now to go along with this, since it's so simple and quick, you get very limited downtime that is needed for the certificate authority. So since you're doing it in place, you just upgrade it there and it's good to go once it's done. Now there are also a lot of improved user experiences because you're upgrading in place rather than creating a whole new system. So the different settings, applications, all those different things are already on the certificate authority and you don't have to take the time to transfer it all over. Now additionally, it becomes very streamlined because there's no need to reinstall applications or take that time like I mentioned to actually replace those settings or reconfigure an Active Directory. Now this was the preferred method by Microsoft up until Windows Server 2012, but from there they moved on to this option two. Now let's take a look at some of the cons of using option one. Now the biggest con is that it actually impacts the availability of the certificate authority, and that's because this upgrade happens on the production certificate authority itself. So there's no secondary certificate authority in place that will back it up. So as you're upgrading it, that service is not available for use, and so it's out of reach of your different users in the PKI. Now additionally, there's not really any contingency plans you can put in place if, say, you're hooking up an HSM and that hardware security module does not work with Windows Server 2019. So this can cause a lot of issues as well because now you have your certificate authority down and you have to take all this time to troubleshoot connecting an HSM to the Windows Server 2019. Now another issue is that you actually can't change the architecture that's used. So if you were on a 32-bit OS architecture, you cannot move up to a 64-bit architecture and vice versa. So this can cause a lot of issues if when moving up to your Windows Server 2019, you may want to move up to a bigger bit architecture. Now another con is that if you install a package that worked with your first version, so your Windows Server 2008, and it actually doesn't work with Windows Server 2019, there's no way to rectify that. It causes a big issue with you know, packages that may be vital to you, but they don't work with 2019. Now additionally, none of the junk files or the registry files are cleaned up when you do this first method. And so there is still a lot of performance issues that are caused by those junk files being in place. And finally, like I said previously, Microsoft does not recommend this as the way to go forward. It, after it hit Windows Server 2016, it actually suggests that you use option number two, which we'll move to now. Now option number two is the CA migration route. And as you can see, there's a lot more pros than there are cons here. 
And so we'll start with our first pro, which is it's actually a very efficient approach since you're creating a clean installation of the Windows Server and you don't have to deal with any of those extra you know, files that may be left over from 2008 server or 2012 server if you use the first method. Now additionally, since Windows Server 2019 is actually getting installed on a separate platform, there's little to no downtime. So what I mean is that you'll still have your Windows Server 2008 CA running, but you'll also be building this 2019 server and that will be slowly building up. So you'll slowly move over customers to the other CA and then eventually you'll get to a point where you have everything on the 2019 Windows server and so you can just turn off that 2008 server and there's barely any downtime at all. Now to go along with this, this actually gets rid of a lot of the unforeseen issues. So say you have issues with integrating an HSM in Windows Server 2019. Since your Windows Server 2008 is still running, you really have all the time you need to troubleshoot that issue. So you can take your time, you can really get it working right, and not have to worry about giving any customers any downtime. Also, starting with a clean build it gets rid of all those junk files and registry files that I previously mentioned. So your performance really goes up getting rid of those files. Finally, like I mentioned, for Windows Server 2016 and onward, this is the recommended method by both Microsoft and best practice. Now let's take a look at some of the cons. So in the case of migrating ADCS, Active Directory Certificate Services, with different domain membership changes or architecture changes, this can cause a bit of complexity when resetting or creating your Windows Server 2019. Now additionally, if you change any Active Directory services, this also causes some issues because you may have a little bit more complexity introducing this new domain or machine into the network. But all in all, these are pretty minor compared to all the pros that you have here. And as you saw in the previous one, there's a lot of different issues that come with using option number one, which is that in-place upgrade. So now we'll go to our recommendation. And we recommend that you use option number two, the Windows CA migration. And there's a couple reasons for that. And number one being that it's actually a direct migration. So you don't have to go through those intermediate steps of having, in our example, Windows Server 2008 change to Windows Server 2012 and then up to Windows Server 2019. This also gives you a lot of time to work on those troubleshooting issues like I mentioned. So if you run into any package issues or HSMs, anything like that that you may need to work with your Windows Server 2019, you really won't have those issues just because you have your 2008 server running at the same time as your 2019 server. Now additionally, you'll also get that maximum uptime and minimal downtime with the migration because you have them running in parallel. So you don't have to worry about shutting one down to upgrade it and then running into issues and now no one can use that CA. Now that lengthy process of the in-place upgrade is also removed and it, like I said, gets rid of that downtime. Finally, like I've mentioned several times before, this is the recommended way by both best practice and Microsoft itself. So you know that this is the best method forward with migrating over your certificate authorities to a new server. And that's all I have for you today. Thank you for watching, and if you have any questions about PKIs or HSMs, please visit our website at www.encryptionconsulting.com. Thank you.